Hello everyone, my name is Christian Negolescu and today I will present you multiple operations that you can do with the um, connector for service now. So take a look on this service now. First I want to go to the incident and get all the incident with the state in progress. Yeah. If we go here on the um, on the service now connector, we just drag and drop a get data wizard. And I have here selected the incident and I have here the state, yeah. So let's uh, let's run this one, and you can see that the state here it's a number, and on the um, um, on the system you have a name. Here you can find on the internet that um, the equivalent uh, one is new, two it's a work in progress, and so on. So in our case we want to see instances that are in progress, so we'll see if the state is equal to two. So let's go here on the. Um, on our SQL and see here that the state should be equal to two. Okay, and in this way I get all the incidents that uh, are in progress. Good, you can see here that I have um, 102, 101, 100 and so on, all are in progress and are there. Now, we want to see what the incidents are in progress and are assigned to the group hardware. To be able to do this, if we go here on the information and I go to the incident and you'll search for group, group, you'll see that here I have a number, so it's an ID. So here basically if I double click, I have the assigned number, but I have to provide him, so I'll write end, and I have to provide him an ID, which I don't know. So to get this ID, I will do different things. First, I will use a get data wizard. Yeah? And on this get data wizard, I want to check about the groups. So I will say group. And on the group, I want the name uh, and ID. Yeah? So I will say here that I want, uh, I will want to select from the group. And I want to get the name. and the system ID. And now we want the one that it's from hardware. So I will say here, it's the name hardware. Name equal to hardware, hardware, okay? So if I run this command, you will see that I get this number. Good, now I will save this and I will put this on a data table. Let's call DT, okay? Here, on this one, I can put directly the number like this. So I'll put the number like this, and if I run it, you will see that I will get only incidents that are part of the hardware. Okay, so these incidents, they have the state in progress and assigned to the group hardware. Now, I will hit save here, but I want to do this on the runtime. So what I will do, instead of, here I have a data table, which is called DT. Here I will get a data table that is called DT Excel. DT, DT Excel, okay, good. And here, instead of, instead of this hard-coded number, I will put a variable, so, how to put the variable? The variable, I'll put it like this. Instead of this one, I will go and say, it's data table, zero, so first row, remember that there is hardware, and then it's one, the two string. Good, and in this way, he will search here for the hardware, get the ID and use the ID here. Now we can run this, uh, to, we can save this on Excel. So here we can save this on Excel. So if I run now the robot, the robot will go, read all the incidents that are in state progress, assign you the group hardware, extract all this data, and then write it on Excel. So let's see the result. Here it's already written on the Excel. And if I go here on the, um, on the sheet tree, I have, the number of the incident, the state of the incident, so on. So in this way, he extracts all my incidents. Now, let's go to the next step. And let's 
do something else. Next step. So I will take the data from an Excel file where I have a new state for the incident and I have a new description. I will use it as a short description. And I will update this on service now. So you can see here on the say on these two incidents, one 100 and 102, I have the short description MIG and MIG2, and I have both state in progress. So I will change this using the connector. So let's see what I have on my uh, uh, on my workflow. So I have an Excel application scope that is reading the, uh, the Excel file. And then I have a for each, yeah? And on the for each, I have an update incident. On the update incident, first I give him the number of the incident. And then if we take a look here, first is the number, the second is the state, and the third is the description. Yeah? So then I will give him the state and the short description. So if I run this, this workflow, will update my incidents based on what the system is reading from the Excel file. So let's see, let's send the refresh and it's done. And let's see what uh, we have. So let's refresh this page and let's see, okay. So you see it modify one and modify five and the statu status now is new and the new status is on hold. Let's go now to the next step. Next thing that I want to present is how to download attachments from the incident or from other object. Yeah? So I have here an incident with multiple attachments. So how, it's the, how easy you can download these attachments? So you have a download all files. And on this download all file activity, first we need to provide a folder. In my case, I will provide here on RPA, I'll provide folder for download, okay? You can see that this folder for download it simply has only the text file. And then I have to indicate an object, yeah? To be able to indicate an object, I have here a list with all the objects from my service now, and I will in indicate the incident in uh, incident object, okay? And then I have to provide him the number of the incident or the system ID. In my case, I have the number, so I already copied that number, and I will copy paste. Good. So that's all. This is the activity that will download all my files from here. So you can see that I have an audio file, an image, and an invoice. So let's go to the, uh, the folder, and let's wait, because he will do all the steps, and the system will download all the files. So first we download the image, then we'll have the invoice probably, uh, the audio file, and then the invoice. Okay, good. And um, the system, it's, uh, the robot finished the job. Now, the last thing, it's uh, here you can have a an, an basic authentication with a user and password, or you can have an auto authentication with a key and secret. To be able to configure the, your um, ServiceNow connector, uh, to ServiceNow to work with the auto authentication, you write O2, you go to application registry, and here you cite a new one and you say create an authentication for IP end. And here you put a name, you will get the client ID, and when you, after you submit, you will get also a client secret. So you take here the ID and the secret, put it on the uh, UiPath Studio on the connector, and in this way you will work with auto authentication. And the last thing, sometimes, the connection is not working by default. So you will see that uh, you are able to connect that you are not able to execute the uh, uh, comments. So it's because you don't have the, uh, the rights, the, the right roles, yeah? So we go to users. You will search here for uh, admin, my user. Uh, uh, admin for my user and here, uh, when I search for my user, I will show you what you can add to this user. So I go here, and on the role, I have the admin role, but if you don't have the admin role, you need to add some roles to be able for the REST API to work and have all the rights. So there are two types of roles that you can add. So one is REST API, REST service, yeah. So you give this REST service and you are able to work with uh, all the commands, or you can go with web service admin. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye.